Ladies and gentlemen, it is the end of an era. If you haven't heard the big news, some major cast members from SNL have officially retired from the show. And I know a lot of people are upset about it. You know, it's been like Kate McKinnon, Pete Davidson, A.D. Bryant, and that that other guy. I don't remember his name. Anyway, it got me thinking about how much I love the SNL open. It's always so stylized, shot beautifully with really great opening credits. So today I'm going to deconstruct my favorite SNL opening credits and show you how they are done. I've really combed through these credits very closely. Maybe the effect I'm about to show you isn't 1000% exactly right, but it's very, very close. Now, just in full disclosure, the credits we're going to be looking at are these ones. These are the opening credits from, I think, about 2014 to maybe 2018. Um, since then, they've redesigned the opening credits. And to be honest with you, I don't think the new look is as exciting and dynamic as this one. So this is what we're going to focus on today. Before we dig right into it, let's take a close look at these opening credits so we can understand all of the components that go with them because they are very, very, very complex. So first of all, I want to show you that each one is actually slightly different. The letters start really big and then they jump small. They seem to be motion tracked along with the video clips. And then some of the text kind of types out and disappears. Yeah, so there's clearly a lot going on here. The one I'm going to focus on for this tutorial is A.D. Bryant. You know, I love A.D. Bryant. People really sleep on her, but she's quite a talent. Love A.D. Bryant. So this is the look we're going to recreate. So let's jump into Apple Motion and start the process here. The first thing you're going to need is a great portrait shot to work with. I grabbed this one here from ArtGrid. I'm so into ArtGrid lately. If you don't subscribe to ArtGrid for stock shots, check it out. I'll link to it down below. Not sponsored, just love it. And this shot is so great because it's got that like nightlife look. Very SNL cast member open. So the first thing about this shot is that it's shot in slow speed, um, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to retime this clip to get it to the right pace. So I'm going to select it here in my project pane, head on over to properties under the timing line. Let's hit show and under speed, I'm going to change this to 200%. So now we're working in real time, which is what we want. Okay, now it's time to start adding the text. So I'm going to head over to the text tool at the center of the screen, and I'm just going to make up a name for this guy. So I've got my text cursor here. I'm gonna click in the canvas and we're gonna name him Sean. And the font I'm using for this is Ponter Alt. I'm not 100% sure what the real SNL font is for this open. It might even be a custom font, but basically you're looking for something all caps and big and blocky. So I'm going to scale up this font so it's really big because if you recall, that's how the open starts. So it's not even completely on the screen. Now let's make some modifications to this text. Let's head on over to the appearance tab. We're going to leave the face white and we're actually going to make the glow white, but I'm not going to check this glow box. You're going to see why later but let's do that. Now let's add some filters to this guy. So again, I'm selected on it in my project pane, head on over to filters. We're going to go to glow and then we're gonna select glow. And this is where the change we made to the glow color appearance comes in. Now the glow will be white. If we had left it on yellow under the appearance tab, it would be yellow, which is not what we want. I'm gonna change this radius to 92. I'm gonna leave the opacity at 1.5. I'm going to leave the threshold at 0.75 and I'm going to change the softness to 0.65. Let's add another filter here to the same text. We're gonna to go to filter, blur, and we're going to select gradient blur. I'm gonna change the amount of this to 39 and I'm going to move these points here in my canvas to kind of that kind of look of more of a vertical configuration. So you can see the blur is really impacting the top of the text, but not so much the bottom. Let's add one more filter to this under filters. We're gonna to go to blur again. This time we're going to select prism. And on the prism, I'm going to change the amount to 27. Now again, select it on that text in the project pane, head on over to properties and let's head over to the blend mode. And we are going to change that to overlay. Guys, before I get further into this tutorial, if you're really enjoying this, but you want to know even more about Apple Motion, I do have a course called Motion Launchpad. You should definitely check it out. I'll link right to it below. All right, let's take that text. I'm going to duplicate it by right clicking on it in the project pane, selecting duplicate, and I'm going to change 
the content of that to a last name under format here. And again, I'm just making this up. His name's going to be Sean Steele. I'm going to reposition this text. So the S, I know it's kind of hard to see. The S is going to be a little bit over the W. Let me just kind of move this so you can see here. See the S? I'm going to move it above the W in Sean. Let's head over to appearance. And I'm going to change the face of this to like a teal color. Now let's head down to our timeline and jump 15 frames. So I'm just gonna hit shift arrow over to jump 10 frames. And then I'm gonna hit the right arrow key five times to go over five more frames. And now I'm going to first be selected, let's say on my last name here, head on up to edit at the top of the motion menu and select split. So now if you look in my timeline, I've got his last name here for 15 frames. And again, for the duration of my project. So that text has been split into two pieces in my timeline. Let's do that again for his first name. I'm gonna select it in my timeline, head on up to edit and select split. And there you go. I'm gonna close out my keyframe editor so you can better see what we've got here. Now to stay organized, I'm going to group both of these sets of text. I'm going to select both pieces of text that are the first 15 frames of my timeline. So this little one, Sean, this little one, Steel, and then I'm going to right click and group those guys. And I'm going to name that group large text to stay organized. Now let's grab the other pieces of text that make up the remainder of my timeline, right click, group those, and we're going to call those ones small text because we're about to resize them. Let me first select the small text elements, not the group, but the actual texts in my project pane, head on over to format, and we're gonna change the size on these guys to 208. And we're going to reposition them in the frame. And remember, I had the S above the W before, which is where we want them now. Now again, I'm gonna select both of these pieces of small text here, head on over to properties, and let's change the blend mode from overlay to vivid light. Okay, let's make some modifications here on the first text that says Sean. We're working with our small text now. Let's select it in our project pane, head over to text in our inspector and work with the appearance. I'm first going to add a drop shadow. I'm going to make this color like a teal. I'm gonna raise the opacity to 84%. I'm gonna raise the blur to 275. Let's make that distance seven. And let's make that angle negative 70. All right, now let's head on over to filters here in our inspector window. I'm gonna disable the gradient blur. Let's work on that glow. I'm gonna reduce the radius to 49. I'm gonna change the opacity to just one. The threshold, let's leave to 0.75. The softness, let's reduce to 0.35. And let's dial down the mix on this to just 37%. Now let's play with the prism filter on that same text. I'm going to reduce the amount to just six. The angle, we're going to change to 270, which is going to give us like an up and down prism effect. And again, let's reduce this mix to 37. Now let's change the appearance of his last name here. So let's select that in our project pane under the small text group. We're again going to add a drop shadow. I'm gonna make it this teal color. We're gonna bring up the opacity on that to 100. The blur is gonna be 275. The distance is going to be seven. And the angle on this one again, negative 70. Now let's head on over to the filters tab. I'm going to disable the prism on this one and the gradient blur. And let's just modify the glow. I'm gonna change the radius to 55. Opacity is gonna stay at 1.5, threshold at 0.75, softness at 0.65, and we're going to leave the mix to 100. All right, now we're gonna add some behaviors to this text. Let's go back to the first name in the small text group. Select it in our project pane. We're gonna head up to the center of the screen under behaviors. We're going to go to parameter and we're going to go to randomize. Now here in the inspector window, let's head down to the apply to line and we're going to go to filters and we're gonna select prism and mix. Before we make any more changes to the randomized behavior, let me turn on my keyframe editor so we can actually see what those changes are going to do. Under amount here, I'm going to make this 93. And you can see now that I'm getting so much variation in these values in my keyframe editor. Let's keep going. Under apply mode, instead of add, we're going to go subtract. Under frequency, we're gonna make it two. And noisiness, we're gonna go 0.55. 
So what that's doing is it's making the prism go on and off at random intervals. Now let's head down to our timeline and find that randomized behavior here. See it? I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it. So now in my inspector window, I have two randomized behaviors. This time I'm going to change the apply to to filters, glow, and again, mix. So now both the glow and the prism are being modified in mix in unison. We're going to leave all the values the same. All right, I'm going to hide that keyframe editor so we can see better what we're doing in our timeline. And I'm also going to collapse the large text group just to give us some room so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to add another behavior to this first name Sean here. But first, what I want to do is change the duration of the text because in the SNL open, it all happens really fast, right? So I'm going to reduce the duration of this name by grabbing it in my timeline. Let's make it three seconds, which I think is even a little bit longer than the SNL open, but that's okay. So I'm selected on that text and I'm going to head on up to behaviors. I'm going to go to text basic and we're going to select pop out. Now it applied the pop out behavior to the beginning of my text. Let me just scrub so you can see what it does. The letters scale up and they fade out one by one. If you saw the video where I gave Apple motion text behaviors a little bit of a makeover because I didn't really love the default settings on most of them, you'll know that you can go in and really tweak the settings, which is what we're about to do. If you missed that video though, it's really a lot of fun. I loved it a lot. So I will link to it up here and down in the description if you want to check that out. So I'm going to move this pop out behavior to the end of my text just by grabbing it and sliding it in my timeline. And I'm also going to change the duration of this guy to 18 frames. Now selected on that pop out behavior, let's head on over to the inspector window and let's make some changes here. I'm first going to head over to this drop down, remove format and scale. So we're going to get rid of where those letters kind of scale in really big. We're going to leave the sequencing to two. We're going to leave animate to character. The spread we're going to reduce to zero and the direction is going to go from forwards to backwards. So the letters are just going to type right out. Now let's move on to the last name here under the small text group. I'm going to change the duration of this guy to even slightly shorter than the first name just by dragging it. I'm just going to eyeball it here. It's going to be a little smaller. Then I'm going to take the pop out behavior from my first name, right click, copy, head over to steal his last name, and we're going to paste that and we're going to move it to the end of his name here. And we're going to leave those properties the same. All right, I think we've done a pretty good job of recreating the appearance from this iconic SNL open. The last step is to motion track it. But before I show you how to do that in motion, if you like this video, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. I do tutorials like this all the time. If there's any other show opens you want to see me recreate, let me know down in the comments. The last thing we need to do is add motion tracking. Let's just finish it up here. So what I'm going to do is take both the small text group and the large text group. I'm going to select them both and I'm going to right click and group them together. Then I'm going to head up to behaviors, navigate down to motion tracking and match move. And now we get this whole grid here. What we need to do is identify what part of our cast member we're going to use to motion track. So I'm going to use his nose. I usually like using people's noses because I think the nostrils are pretty um, defined for the tracker to kind of cling to. So I'm just going to grab the edge of this rectangle grid. I'm just going to shrink everything down. I'm going to make it round. And I'm going to reposition it right over here. And now I'm going to queue up my playhead to the very beginning of the timeline. And we're going to head over to the behaviors tab in the inspector window. And we're just going to play with these settings a little bit. I'm going to turn off the rotation adjust in that SNL open. Those letters stayed very level. They did not rotate no matter what the cast member did. So we're going to turn off that rotation and we're going to leave the scale turned off. We're just going to stay with position here. And now I'm going to hit this forward arrow to analyze. All right, let's take a look at our final result. 
with my knockoff SNL theme music. I definitely couldn't use the regular theme music because I didn't want to get demonetized. I feel like this turned out so great and I had so much fun doing it. I picked out some other videos I think you might really enjoy. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again.